Hey, Rex. Hungry, Rex? Chew your food. Okay, I want to take a second and go through where we're at with Rex and what are the steps to come. So, as you can see, Rex's head is now mounted onto the wireframe body that I machined up in earlier episodes. Gotten her off the test stand, gotten her head and neck into her permanent wiring configuration. So that includes using a, a Molex connector here to be able to separate the head wiring from the wiring down her spine so that this head can come on and off more easily. The big changes this week are predominantly electronic. Gone ahead and decided that for the current system, the current setup, the electronics are going to live basically at what would be Rex's pelvic area. The idea for that is that in next steps, I want to work towards getting Rex walking. Got servos on order, and I'm going to be redesigning the legs to be more functional and less of a, uh, a wireframe structural sort of design there. So I've got wiring run down through the conduit that is Rex's spine right now and comes into this solderless breadboard got a couple of different things going on here. I've got the 10,000 milliamp hour USB battery bank is running both the servo motor power and the Arduino itself using two separate outs on the battery bank. Part of that is running this simple header that is going to the power rail and the ground rail on the solderless breadboard. That power rail and ground rail serves as the common ground for everything running through the system, including the Arduino. It also serves to provide all of the power straight up to the servos. The various power and ground wires here that come from the servos are run directly into the power rail. The signal wires that tell the servos when to activate are run into the Arduino. And we'll look at the setup on the Arduino in a second. Additionally, in the breadboard right now, I have the GTEC voice recognition module set up along with its incredibly large microphone. The last component that is run through the solderless breadboard are all the connections for the LEDs in Rex's head. So the eyes as well as the light in the jaw that I finally have working again. Those are set up real simply. We've talked about it before. Just a couple of current limiting resistors to make sure that we don't burn up the LEDs. That's the bulk of the electronics there. So let's take a look at the Arduino real quick and then we'll move on to looking at the code. As you can see, I've gone ahead and switched out the Arduino Uno that I was originally running all the code on for an Arduino Mega 2560. The idea between, behind switching to the Mega is that I've got some components on order. I have a MP3 shield coming, I have got an ultrasonic sensor, a couple other parts and pieces that because of the serial data that Rex is going to need to be autonomous and interacting with her environment, being able to sense where she's at and being able to communicate back, not only with visual and movement responses, but also being able to articulate, let's say, uh, through growling, roaring, things like that, we need a whole bunch of serial data run. So the nice thing about the Mega is that rather than simply having the, the zero and one serial pins, 
we've actually got a whole bank of serial pins that we can utilize to get more communication ability for sensors and whatnot. So I think we're very likely in the last board that Rex will use on a permanent basis. It'll be this mega going forward for the Mark I Mod Zero Rex. So what do we have wired in right now? As it stands, the signal wires for the neck and the jaw are wired into pins 9 and 10. And you've seen those in the code before, they haven't changed. There is a possibility going forward that they will change, however, and I will just change the, the pin assignments for those variables, if that's what we end up doing. The reason those may need to change is that if I get into using a internal measurement unit, to help coordinate Rex's mechanics and movement as she gets to the point where she's walking. That needs a whole separate set of pins and it will interfere with those nine and 10 pins. Uh, additionally to the nine and 10 pins, I'm using the number six pin currently as the signal wire to drive the light in Rex's jaw. And then we're using number 12 as the wire to trigger the eyes. So as I mentioned before, the motor power comes off of the USB battery bank. The power for the five volt power for the LEDs comes off of the pulse width modulated pins on the Arduino itself. The biggest hunk of work in this last week has really been focused on getting the head and neck assembly ready to be mounted on the spine. The first thing that I really was concerned about with that was getting this Molex connector put in place so that Rex's head can come on and off more readily. So that is simply a crimp pin Molex connector which has the power, ground, and signal wires for both the neck servo and the jaw servo, as well as the LEDs for the eyes and the LEDs in the jaw run through it. That makes it much easier to do troubleshooting and do some tweaks with Rex, because rather than having to worry about all the wiring down the spine, we can just pop that connector off and pull the head off. And that's gonna become important because as you can see, We've cut these, I've cut these linear actuators back really, really tight. And I talked in the last episode about how I was having some issues with Rex's range of motion. And you can see that like right there, Rex bottoms out against the, the plate and she does the same thing here. So I'm going to have to go ahead and recut linear actuators that are just a little bit longer. I wanna go back to the actual specs. If you remember, Rex is a one-tenth scale model of Sue the Dinosaur, so I'm actually gonna go back to the, uh, the morphology specs and remeasure the distance between Sue's hips and the tip of her nose. And what I wanna do is dial in that distance so that it's right in that 10% range that we're shooting for. And that should help us. Also, as I've looked at this over and over again, one of the big limits right now in Rex from a functionality standpoint is that while she can turn her head left to right, that's the only kind of motion that she's got. So. Because of that plate that I've designed, it works great for attaching Rex to the conduit neck, but it doesn't allow for any, any sort of tilting head motion. She can't raise or lower her head, and she also can't roll her neck left to right. So it's a little bit of a, it's not as organic as I would like it to eventually be. So we'll go ahead now and take a look at the code that Rex is running. Okay, looking at the code here, what we have is, as we saw before, using the variable speed servo library, we've gone ahead and declared that jaw as pin 6 as a variable. We've got the other variables that we had talked about before, and then the big change here is that we've gone ahead and established that the com is going to be this reply from the voice recognition. Getting into the void setup, in the last 
bit of code that we showed, I had uh, the serial begin already written in because it becomes critical for the voice recognition. It's actually in the serial communication that the voice recognition is recognized. Jaw and eyes are declared as outputs. We set the eyes to high to make sure that everything is starting to work. After a five second delay, then we go ahead and attach the neck and jaw servo go ahead and then write the next servo and jaw servo to their initial starting positions. Then I have this initial for loop that I showed you last time that takes us through an iteration of the jaw opening and closing to ensure that everything is working there. Then we go ahead and we write the eyes to low, we write the jaw to low. After three seconds, this is where we really begin this serial communication for real. We load the we set the GTEC voice recognition module to common mode and begin going through the instructions that are necessary for it to pull from the initial bank of instructions that have been recorded from it. So then we get into the void loop. And the void loop right now is simply made up of a while loop that shows us that while the serial communication is available, it is going to go ahead and do all of the various cases or commands that we've recorded. What I don't have in here yet, and I will in, need to do at some point here, is to go ahead and at the end of that while loop put in an else statement where if the serial is not available, then Rex throws some kind of an error. That will likely be something through the eyes. I think the eyes are the easiest way to determine whether or not there's an error um, and uh, to give feedback on that. So I'm not sure if that's going to be some type of blink pattern or possibly I may change the eyes out for RGB LEDs and have a particular color like green or blue or white indicate some type of error state. So then the serial read pulls from these various cases. The GTEC module has the commands written to it, recorded to it, and then those commands are written as particular cases. So when the voice recognition, voice recognition module hears, hey Rex, it's going to write the eyes to high, it's going to move the neck through a range of motion, eventually reset it, and then bring the eyes to low. In the same way, at each of these various cases, various commands, the Arduino is going to take us through a given set of steps. Down here in both the blink command and in the chew your food command you can see that I've implemented for loops so that rather than having multiple lines of copy paste code we've cleaned that up with some real simple stuff and I've gone ahead and declared my variables in such a way where E is a variable that I'm going to use for the eyes, J is going to be used be a variable that I use for the jaw so that real quickly I can see as things get more in depth I just have that automatic sort of mental check of whether or not the code is is written the way I want it and then ultimately when it does any of these things these break statements at the end are what take it back to its initial serial read state so that's where the code's at right now. I'm going to go ahead and set up a GitHub repository for this because YouTube, for whatever reason, is not happy when I try and post the code uh, just as a copy-paste into the comments or into the description of the video. So I'm going to go ahead and get a GitHub up and running here, and I will go back and amend the descriptions on all the videos where we've shown code with a link to that once I've got it up and running. So... That's that. As always, thanks for stopping by. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing. Any comments, thoughts, suggestions that you have to offer are always welcome. You can leave them down in the comments. And we'll see you again soon. Cheers.